Welcome to Running Down the Clock, where we break down all of this week's big news, events, and controversies from the National Football League. Over the next 45 minutes, we will give you basic fan perspective and opinion on the most important stories and moments happening now. So, let's start the clock. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Running Down the Clock. I am Tyler Walzak. I'm here with Puya Raisi. Um, Puya, I didn't get to actually watch any of the games on Sunday or Monday because I was working all weekend, but I did see one thing. I want to talk about it immediately because I hate, 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 hate when things like this happen. Um, Did you see the Panthers game? Hail Mary from uh, their quarterback, Walker, PJ Walker. Walker. Yep. To DJ Moore, who seems to be the last playmaker left in the Panthers. Hail Mayor, Hail Mary, they catch, they tie the game up. P, um, DJ Moore takes his helmet off to celebrate, throws it on the ground, celebrates the last second touchdown. All they need is the field goal to win the game, the extra point. The penalty for taking you are not allowed to celebrate by taking your helmet off. He does it, 15-yard penalty, puts the the extra point attempt back another 15 yards. They miss it. They lose the game in overtime. I hate when stuff like this happens. The only dumber thing a wide receiver or a running back or any football player could do, in my opinion, is to drop the ball before they get into the end zone. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's bad. You know the rules. You yes, know the rules. it's stupid. It's The NFL is stupid for having a rule like that. Once the play he- is dead... Does it matter? You're, you're allowing them to celebrate, but you're not allowing them to do it in one certain way. You can't take your helmet off. I understand obscene gestures, rude things, unsportsmanlike conduct, but the play's dead. If you take your helmet off after an interception as you walk off the field, is that disallowed? Are you allowed to do that? Uh, you get a 15-yard penalty. If you're on the field of play and you take your you helmet take off, off to celebrate, helmet. No, no, no. It just you take off your helmet if, like, you threw the interception as the quarterback. No, they probably would. I'm guessing that they wouldn't penalize that. So, why are you penalizing somebody else? He took it off immediately. I get it. it off immediately. The play's so. dead. So, you think the NFL is the problem, not the. Well, I think NFL's rules on celebrating have always been a little bit stupid. But it's it's anything like at the end of a play, you're not you're not allowed to take your helmet off. But at the end of the day, it's the player's fault. He cost them the game yes, because the 100%. rule is the rule. The rule is the rule, and you know that going in. So 100, percent it's a stupid it's stupidity on the player. 100. percent You so, know you're not allowed to do it. Well, then why are you defending him? I'm not defending him. I'm saying the rule is stupid. We all mm-hmm. know that's stupid. However, since it is the rule, he's not like he's protesting it. He's just falling victim to it, and he's being an idiot. The greatest catch of his career, the greatest throw of P.J. Walker's three career. The, Will be so the forgotten. rule book specifically forbids removing the helmet during a celebration. That's the rule. You cannot yeah. remove your helmet during a celebration. So the greatest play of his career thus far will be forgotten because they lost the game and nobody ever remembers the losers. Well, they're going to remember this. Who who was second in Super Bowl 32? I don't know who won. You don't know. Exactly. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows the losers. I don't know who won. I don't know who won the game. Super Bowl 32. What Super Bowl are we at now? 50 something. Well, how the fuck am I supposed to know who won Super Bowl 32? I mean, if I brought it up, I'm sure you'd know. If I told you the two teams, tell me the winner of Super Bowl 32, and I'll tell you the loser right now. Ah, uh, Super Bowl 32. I'm going with Giants. Okay, you can't you can't just guess because this isn't a guessing program. So if you're supposed to, if you're going to call me out for not knowing the winner of Super Bowl 30 or the loser of Super 30 Super Bowl 32, you have to tell me the winner of Super Bowl 32, and then I'll tell you the fucking loser. I looked it up. It was the Broncos, but my point wasn't about they won. The Broncos won. The Broncos won. They beat the Packers. Super Bowl 32. Oh, you didn't let me guess. I would have guessed the Packers. Because that would be that would have been one of John Elway's two back-to-back. Yeah. It's like 97 yeah. and 98, right? Yeah. Yeah, I would have easily guessed the Packers. The fans know that. Everyone's listening knows that I would have easily guessed the Packers. Even the little kid with the balloon would know that. Yeah. The thing wasn't to call you out on not knowing. 
The thing but that's was what you did. Support, no, but that's what you was, did. The thing was to support the idea that nobody remembers the losers. Everybody only remembers the winners. Nobody cares about who. Well, we didn't second. remember the winners, but that's what I'm saying. We didn't remember the winners because they used numerical uh, alpha, uh, the numerical the numbers. Roman, I don't, I don't remember. We the didn't Roman speak numerals. in. We didn't speak with the, the Roman numerals, <laughs> so it didn't change anything. What, you, what you're saying doesn't make sense. Super Bowl triple X two I. Yeah, the Broncos versus the Packers. I remember it well. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> the Terrell Davis was probably the MVP of that. Could have been. Could have no. been. He could have been. He could have been. Was that way? Uh, Elway was the quarterback, but I think Terrell Davis, the running back, was the MVP in one of them, at least. Anyway, so just a little bit of uh, something that was linked between you and I, maybe not officially, to the uh, DJ Moore. The Packers, they made yes. no moves. No moves at the deadline, and we'll talk about the deadline. That's a mistake for the Packers, is it not? Did you not? Did you see that game of um, the Bills versus the Packers? No, I didn't get to watch. I didn't get to watch. Oh, actually, game. I saw that was the Sunday night game. I saw the last half of that game. Yeah. Did you see how just dead inside Aaron Rodgers looked? How defeated? How deflated he looked from having yeah. nobody? Well, the, and I'm surprised they didn't go out and get one. I'm surprised they didn't go out and get DJ Moore because after that play, like Robbie Anderson got sent to the dressing room. Next day, he was traded. Christian McCaffrey traded. I mean, he probably didn't do anything wrong. Um, well, I don't know if he did or not, but traded. DJ Moore was the last playmaker they had after he made a boneheaded play. You would have thought that traded. You would have thought that. That I believe we talked. We've been talking about for three weeks now that he could be traded and probably should go to the Packers. There's some teams that made trades that I don't know why they made trades that the Packers could have made. Like, do you think the Packers are they done now? They got to be done now, right? There's no one to throw the ball to. Oh, yeah. I thought they were done two weeks ago. Yeah. Well, especially with uh, Kirk Cousins running away with that uh, that division right now. It's not Kirk Cousins running away with the division. It's the Minnesota Vikings right. running away with the division. And the Minnesota Vikings made a trade with, I don't understand this, as a Lions fan. So uh, let's talk about some of these trades. It was, wow. it was a big week in the NFL for trades. It was the trade deadline. It was the before we go wild in the trades. Can I bring up the Detroit? Detroit looked good. And they looked like classic Detroit of this year where they're playing, I don't know, 43 minutes of football. This year. This this every year. They play enough to be in the game. And then in the fourth quarter, they just, they go back to playing bad football. Their their offense was killing it again. They were on fire. I know. There was like 21 to 7 at one point. Yeah. They were yeah. looking good, throwing bombs. I know that's what they running do, backs, running backs, finding massive gaps. Like they looked great. And then suddenly, I don't know. There's something, something weird there that they just can't play a complete game. They're cursed because they treat their players so poorly that they're cursed. Yeah. That, that maybe so, that's the pl- players protest. Like, listen, you don't treat me like a human. I'm not going to give you a full human's effort. <laughs> So they traded away TJ Hawkinson, who was a first round pick to an in-division, in-division rival, the Minnesota Vikings, um, for a second and third round pick. They had to give up a fourth. So TJ Hawkinson goes to the Vikings with a fourth round pick and a conditional fourth round pick in 2023 and 2024. The Lions get a 2023 second round and a 2024 third round pick. Blah, 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 blah. Who gives a shit about that? TJ Hawkins on the Vikings for what seems like not a great return. Now, what I'm hearing from my sources, which is just the internet because I don't have any sources, um, the Lions were doing this because TJ Hawkinson was going to have a contract um, extension and they didn't want to sign him long term for the money that he probably was going to get because Lamar Jackson about two months ago said that if the Baltimore Ravens aren't going to pay him, he has a short list of teams he wants to go to. The Detroit Lions are on that short list. Now, that's fucking awesome if you're a Lions fan because Lamar Jackson is wicked. I would happily give up TJ Hawkinson if it means that the cap space we're saving goes to Lamar Jackson. If it doesn't go to Lamar Jackson, I don't understand this trade. 
I don't know why they did it for a first round pick that was so starting to finally come around. Can I ask a question? Has a superstar player ever gone to Detroit? Yes, Detroit has started off with a superstar player, but has a superstar player ever gone from a team to the Detroit Lions? Um, I can't think of one. And I think it goes back to what you said and what everybody else knows. Why would you ever go to this organization that's not going to treat you with your worth? TJ Hawkinson deserved everything they should have given him. He was a good player for them. He had a couple of injuries that set him back a bit. But other but than that, so, so, he was but, solid. He was as good a tight end as they've had in ages. I know. So why trade him? No reason to trade him. But so the, I'm, just so, saying, I'm just saying that goes to show like, seriously, has any superstar player ever willingly signed with Detroit? They've had, they had extensions. They've had extensions. A lot of players, like Matthew Stafford, extended with Detroit. Extended. Calvin but have Johnson. been on another team and have said, you know what? I don't like it here. I think I'm going to sign with Detroit. Detroit looks like a great place for me to go. Off the top of my head, no. No. I can think Golden Tate, but I don't know if we traded for Golden Tate when he came from Seattle or if he signed with us. I don't know. But he was a good player for us, and he was in his prime when he came. Right. So, so that would be the only player I can think of. But does that not like is that not kind of rare for other teams? Like nobody yeah, I mean, wants to sign, nobody wants to sign with Detroit. So why would Lamar Jackson want to sign with Detroit? He said, I don't know, he said he wanted to. He said that it was on his short list. Yeah, but all these could just be moves to, you know, you, you say some crazy things to make your girlfriend jealous or your boyfriend jealous, right? Like You, you don't say to your girlfriend or boyfriend, I'm going to go date the homeless guy down the street if you don't treat me better. That's the equivalent of saying you're going to go to the My Detroit girlfriend Lions. said that. Your girlfriend <laughs> said, hey, Priya, you don't treat me right. You know that real smelly guy down the street? I'm going to go make out with him. There's no way. That's the equivalent of the Detroit lions is they're the worst that nobody, they, no one is ever going to pay attention to them. So you can't threaten to leave using their name. I think he's just threatening to leave. Right. I think they're actually on a short list. They could be just because they have the money to give them. They have the well, Yeah. They have the money to give them. They can throw a ton of money at him. He could like, it's a coach that is a player's coach. Do you think it'll happen though? Do you think in your heart of hearts, Lamar Jackson would ever sign with Detroit? I don't know. What you know what scares me, which we've talked about the last couple of weeks, and this actually does I think about this more and more. Players are especially like Lamar Jackson that are very good at lateral left to right. And that's how they make a lot of their money is moving left and right and planting that foot in the ground. I see them wanting to go play at stadiums that are grass and not turf. Detroit is a turf stadium. So I I actually feel like players are going to start to make decisions based on what the, the grass or turf situation is at their home field. And I mean, I'm not saying that's why Lamar Jackson wouldn't go to Detroit. Uh, there's many reasons he wouldn't go to Detroit, but I think that could be one of those for a player with his style. Yeah. Has he ever played in Detroit? It's possible. I'm, I don't know. I'd have to look it up. It's possible he's never even played in Detroit. He never looked up the field. He never thought about that. Well, um, yeah, I mean, there's, but he had a short list, and Detroit was on it. So can I be, can I be excited about that? Oh, you can be excited. I just feel like we're setting you up for another heartbreak. Yeah, but as Lions fans, you never have hope. You just talk about how there could be hope about having hope. Yeah. So Here. let's just hope that one day we get hope. I just don't understand the trade from a perspective of trading to an in division rival that is first, first place currently. You're only making them better. And Hawkinson is that's good for the Vikings because they had Irv Smith Jr. But Irv Smith Jr. is not um he's going yeah. on injured reserve, actually. So he has there, a high ankle sprain. He's going on injured reserve. So they needed to get someone for that position. There could also be the logic of you're trading to in-game uh, in division rival, knowing that he's not gonna sign with them again because they're not gonna have the cap space. And I'd have to do the math on this, knowing that they got a lot of other superstar players, which they're gonna probably keep over him. So it's gonna right. be a short-term deal. This year, they're not chasing, they're not really rivals this year because they're not chasing them. They're a little bit too far behind. And you know what? I'm I'm hoping that they did it for. 
is they said, hey, let's make sure the Packers can't come back and win this division. So let's give one of our better players to the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, spite, spite the spite move, a spite, a spite trade. Uh, love the spite move. The only other thing is that uh, I don't think they're that well managed that they really think of the best elite moves to make. They're not playing chess out there. They are just. They are checkers. They, <laughs> they have never even heard of the game of chess. The yeah. Detroit Lions are checkers. They are trying to get their. I, I their was going to say like to the other side of the board checkers. so that they can they're double just up. Playing pin the tail on the donkey. Like they are just not <laughs> playing the right games whatsoever. Like they're just they don't have it figured out in terms of management. They make such bad management moves. They do. They do. They always yeah. have. And until your ownership changes, I don't know. But also, whenever you change ownership. You risk, um, you risk a team moving. That's the the kind of the fear of changing ownership. But the Lions have been asking them to change ownerships for for years and years and years. But people putting bags in their heads and stuff. So it's there's always a risk with that happening. Now, now that we're talking about ownership, let's get on this topic real quick because this happened. The Washington Commanders and Dan Snyder have found a bank to do some bullshit bank stuff to try to look into selling the team. I think valuation of some sort to see what they're. Yeah. yeah. So do you think that this is like Dan Snyder being real about it? Or do you think he's just putting on airs to be like, Hey, uh, blah, 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 blah. I tried and this all happened. And I think it is real only for the fact that who has gone up against the NFL and won. That's exactly. The last, that's the last one question. I can think of. The last one I can think of is Colin Kaepernick. And yeah, he got a closed door deal. I think the deal was something like $80 million, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if that's even confirmable or not. But at the end of the day, his career was ended. Yes. I don't think, and you know, $80 million for the NFL, I feel like that's a drop in the bucket, right? Like that's nothing. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. This is a billion dollar company, right? Like they're, they're okay. That didn't hit him in the pocketbook. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but again, I don't know if anybody goes up against the NFL and wins in the end, right? I uh, I 100% agree with that. So his threats of coming out against other players, or not other players, other uh, owners, clearly went by the wayside because he's now looking to sell the team. So I, want, I actually wonder what more people might have on him where they said, like, okay, well, you say anything about us, then we're just going to go straight to this stuff. And that scared him off even more. Yeah, the only other thing more powerful there is the U.S. government. And if it's, again, I don't have any of these facts, but if they are after him on taxes, money owed, they're, they'll send the military after him to get the money. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there, there's no way out of that. So if he needs the money to pay, he's got to pay, right? And if it's that widely publicized. Yeah. So I think that's this also might be one of those situations where he can get out of the limelight a little bit and have – the government kind of back off. Yeah. Is I talked gonna, about this before. Is he going to beat the U.S. government and the NFL on the same day? I just don't think so. But this is good news for Washington and the fan base of the, the, the commander's fan base because you could now get an owner like, I think it's Bezos who's trying to look into buying a team or somebody who has billions, billions, and billions of dollars and is in the, some type of tech market. I think it's Bezos that's looking to buy a team. You could take Washington, keep them in Washington, build a new stadium. That's great for everybody involved. The city, the people working there, um, the fans, the players, the coaching staff, everybody gets to an upgrade. So it seems like good things will happen in Washington if that team is sold. For sure. I wonder if do you think they'd go through another like rebranding at that point? I, it's possible. And... I don't see why not just can get rid of his past completely start fresh, new ownership, new stadium, new everything, right? Like new identity. You're not yeah. the same team. Heck move, move him to another city. No, I don't. <laughs> that would be the, again, like I said, that'd be terrible for fans. Um, but I have nothing else. Well, to I'm say a child of that. I, I'm a child of that myself. So, I mean, I, I, yeah, you tend to hate when, when a team leaves, you hate them out of, you spite hate them for no reason at all. I hate when my team leaves that I grew up with. Sure, but yeah. why? Because they left me. That is your girlfriend the breaking owner, up with you going to it, smelly guy down the street. It's the owner in you are talking about let's okay. This is you're talking about the Vancouver Grizzlies. I'm talking about the Vancouver Grizzlies. 
So you're mad at the ownership that's in Vancouver for selling the team and the new owner came and left them, but you're blaming the entire franchise and all of its players. Well, we didn't really have many good players. Um, no, I'm just mad at the situation. Like, sure, but you won't cheer for John was, Morant. And the, and no, the I'll cheer Grizzlies. for him individually, but I don't like the team, the Memphis uh, Grizzlies. But they're wearing Vancouver Canucks, Vancouver Grizzlies jerseys. Vancouver Canucks, that was a, that was a gaff right there. Yeah, I, I had a gaff. Seattle Mariners gaff this week. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> that was funny. If anyone had been watching the Seattle Seahawks games, the referee said there was a penalty on the Seattle Mariners player or the coach actually um, over the, the microphone to the stadium, uh, which was pretty funny. Also, you sent me a clip. I did not see this either. And I'm wondering, it must be real, but um, Puya sent me a video of the referees from Super Bowl, insert Roman numeral here, um, New England Patriots for Seattle Seahawks on the last play where the Seahawks threw the ball instead of just giving it to Marshawn Lynch. And the referees are standing there talking to each other. We'll, maybe we'll put this on our social media, on Instagram. The referees say to each other, why would you throw the ball if you have Marshawn Lynch? I have never seen that before. I had never seen that before either. I was surprised that it took this many years for that to kind of make its rounds Yeah, of the referees questioning, why the hell did they run? Uh, why didn't they run that ball? Why the, the hell world was questioning it? We're still talking about it today. It's been what eight, nine years? Yeah, and we're still talking about years? it all the time. It's still a laughable joke anytime it happens in the NFL. Anytime someone runs the, or throws the ball, Richard when... Sherman is still screaming every night, every week's yeah. broadcast <laughs> at Russell Wilson to run that ball. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, Russell still doesn't do it. He still yeah. doesn't do it. That's so that was actually that's actually crazy. See, we'll post that on our social media so that we just fans... transition three topics without getting anywhere, but let's keep going. Keep well, that's what we do on this show. So let's go to another trade here. Here's another trade. This is why I don't understand why the Packers didn't make any wide receiver trades because the Chicago Bears traded for Chase Claypool from the Pittsburgh Steelers for a second round pick. Why are the Chicago Bears trying to find help at wide receiver when they don't have a quarterback to, that throws the ball very well? Again, I could think it to be something that they're investing in their young quarterback, that they're not looking for him to be good this year. They're looking for him to be good in a few years, which is possible. If you actually stick it out with a kid, you can develop him. Because they got a young receiver who they think maybe he could be good if he gets a little bit of coaching and kind of learns a better football IQ. I remember he had that big... uh, blunder last year where he he screwed up he pulled his helmet off after the touchdown he didn't even get the touchdown he just danced in there instead of uh giving the ball to the the ref to spot the ball so they could call the next play yeah. and he blamed it on his uh offensive line i know i know and well here's the other thing is they're trading away we'll get to this but they're trading away their defensive stars to get a wide receiver they just traded, traded away the two most important players on their defense. The Chicago Bears traded away Rokon Smith and Robert Quinn. And they trying to upgrade an offense piece? That doesn't make any sense to me. So the only logic I can think of is they're getting rid of guys who they don't think will be there by the time they're good for, you know, for, tra- uh, for picks. Did they get picks of them? They got a second round pick from the Steelers. No, no sorry. The, the Steelers Ro- received the second round pick. Yeah, for Roquan Smith. Smith. Oh, for Roquan Smith, they got um here. Let me look that up right here. They got uh 2023 second round pick and a 2023 fifth round pick. Fifth round pick. Yeah. Which is fine, like sure, but uh, why why are you trying to gain picks if you're trading picks? for a wide receiver that is not proven in this league. He's had one good year and he has not proven anything. He's from down the street. He's from Abbotsford. Is he not somewhere around there? Yeah. Yeah. So like now, sorry, what did they give up for him? They gave up a second round pick for him. Maybe they want some sort of receivers for their quarterback to develop with to throw to. That would be the sell. But if you think one of the best defensive players in the league 
is worth a second round pick because that's what you got for him. You got a second round pick and a fifth round pick and you traded away one of the best defenders in the league who has 78 over 78 tackles in seven games, which is in, an insane amount. And then you trade it's him away though. for a second round It's inflated. Round it's inflated because he's on the field the entire game because the uh, quarterback ain't doing anything. <laughs> so then why trade away? So why trade away? Why get more offensive help if they're never on the field? Ah. Uh, Again, I don't have the answers for this. It could be a poor move. I'm only trying to come up with some sort of logic to explain it, what their thinking is. The thinking is we have to grow and develop this quarterback. We have to get uh, some targets for him to to actually practice throwing to. And we're not going to keep these defensive stars for a while. They're going to contracts and we won't be able to keep them. We're not going to plan to keep them later. So let them go now for some picks so we can at least we're going to tank and grow the team, you know, rebuild. Well, sure. Do you think my only thought process, and it's the same as the Lions trading away Hawkinson, do you think that they got Claypool, a wide receiver? Despite the Packers? Despite the Packers. (laughs) I would love it. I would love it if all these moves are just despite the Packers. I don't like the Packers. I don't know why. I've never had a connection with the Packers. Never had any reason not to. I just don't like the Packers. Nobody likes the Packers. I think what it is. You know, I I don't like Packers fans. I hate Packers fans. Yeah. I hate Packers fans. And they wear the stupid cheese heads. They're the the worst fan base. Because they... From my experience, I take Philly fans over uh, Packers fans. I would take... I've never met an Eagles fan. The only... Actually, I've met a couple. Been lovely. I would rather hang out with Eagles fans as well. I'd much rather hang out with Philadelphia fans because Philadelphia fans are brutal on their teams. Like they are either win or get the hell out of town, which I respect more than fans of the Packers that are like, our team's always going to be good, blah, 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 blah. Like we love them. Even when they're bad, they're good. No, get that shit out of here. I want fans that are like, our team sucks and we need to do something about it. And that's Philly. Yeah, I feel like you and I would be Eagles fans more so than... 100%. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Because I love the Lions and they're garbage and the entire team needs to fucking be better. But I, I love them and I, I watch them, but I'm not going to give them an excuse. I'm not going to say, oh, you know, they'll turn it around next year. No, be better now. You've been, you suck. You're due. Packers, Packers You're fans due. always are like, oh, well, our team's going to be good. We're going to have fun and we're going to sit in the cold and we're going to eat cheese. And like we live in a small town and it's all it is is a football field. No, give me the fucking blue collar Philly fans every day of the week. Every day of the week. I think and okay, blue. if we're going to talk weird trades, not weird trades, but let's talk trades more because I think this one's a weird one. Calvin Ridley traded to the Jacksonville Jaguars for next year. Well, yeah, he's suspended this year. So, and what are they going to return? So it's complicated what they get in return. It's is it a it's, gamble? It's a it's a conditional <laughs> fifth round pick and a conditional second round pick. Yeah, they're both gambles. That's kind of fitting, is it not? I see what you're doing here. Yeah, I see what you're doing here. You're <laughs> <laughs> so he was suspended for gambling, and now you're saying that the. Jaguars or essentially the Falcons are gambling on his success to see if they can get better picks. Well, that's what it is. That's what a conditional pick is, right? Yes. It's a bit of a gamble. Super complicated because if he signs like long-term or something with Jacksonville, then it's like a fourth round pick if, or like a second round pick. But if he just plays a certain amount of games, it's like a fourth round pick. If he doesn't play at all, it's like a sixth round pick. It's those numbers and rounds are wrong. But it's something as complicated as that, where depending on how he does, that's what they're going to get out of this. So, yes, the Falcons are 1,000% gambling on Calvin Ridley, which is fitting. I like that you put that together. That's very clever. Yeah. Uh, Now, the one thing you left out is the division leading Falcons are gambling on this. How the hell are they leading the division? I will. I... (laughs) That's actually crazy. We had them slotted at, you know, probably not even playing the season out 
because they were going to be so bad. Yeah, we were said they're one of the worst. We've been wrong about the bad teams this year. We thought the Seahawks not, and the Falcons. We not thought the, the NFC Seahawks. South. Not so. Not the AFC South. We okay, were not we wrong. Nailed the AFC South. We nailed the Except AFC South. Except Tennessee. They're leading. Yeah, that they're division. five and two. Yeah, but they're still bad outside of it. Are they not? Uh, they're five in, and two. No, the t- uh, Titans are not five and two. Are they? The Titans are five and two. Titans are five and two. Oh my god! How did yeah. that? happen? The Titans are five and two. Um, so wait, who's the NFC conference? Yeah, the Falcons are they're four and four. That's a bad division, the NFC South. Falcons four and four, division. Buccaneers three and five, Saints three and five, Panthers two and six. Could have been three and five if they had just not taken their helmets off. That's a bad division. So the Falcons trade away a, a player that they're not using for some picks. Now I mean, this is a smart on Jacksonville Jaguars. I think this is pretty smart for the Jaguars. Do you? Yeah. If like you Calvin sorry, is a so, first round pick, first round pick, and he's a great wide receiver. So if Jacksonville doesn't like him and doesn't use him, they give up less. If they don't like him, they don't use him. They give up basically nothing. So yeah, that's that's a no brainer. Yeah. That's, and then if that, they that, sign that, up, that's, a, that's, so, a, that's like a you know you sign up for a thirty day free trial. That's hundred percent. You, you sign just up for have a 30 to day remember to cancel it before they charge you credit card. That's all that Jacksonville has to do. Yeah, unless you love it. Yeah, and then just if you love remember it, remember not to put them on the sidelines. Uh, yeah. If you know, it's like, hey, you know, we don't want this guy. We don't want this guy. Take him back, and yeah. they get it for free. And now the only thing that we forget about, well, I forgot about Calvin Ridley before he was suspended was that he also didn't really want to play. He didn't enjoy playing football that much anymore. Period. Period. He didn't enjoy playing in Atlanta. Or he did not enjoy playing. Period. Well, that's the question is that maybe Atlanta had a conversation with him and he said, I don't want to be in Atlanta anymore. And that's why this trade happened. Well, does he have a no trade clause or did they not even bother calling him? No, he wouldn't have a no trade clause because he's too young. Yeah. So maybe they didn't even call him. They're just like, hey, by the way, like you're not playing, but now you're not playing in Jacksonville. Well, not playing Atlanta. You have to go to Jacksonville. Yeah, but he doesn't have to go there. He's not. He's suspended for the season. Well, no, but next year he'll have to go there. Yeah. Now, is he allowed to gamble on his during his suspension? No, I don't think so. That's why, because he chose not to play last year and he sat out and he gambled. If you're not playing, can't you gamble? I don't, I don't understand the rules at all. I just if you don't gamble. I mean, I guess you shouldn't be gambling if, in the sport that you play. Well, that opens up another can of worms. So we already screamed about this, and I think I threw Pete Rose in there somewhere. But yeah, that must have been during the preseason games or preseason weeks that we talked about football. Yeah, but that's a great trade. It won't happen. It doesn't mean shit for this year. But it's a great oh. trade. So another wide receiver that went, Kadarius Tony, goes from the New York Giants six and two, and they weren't using him at all. And he goes to the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. So, what was the criticisms about him? He's not a very coachable player. He's disgruntled. He's just kind of doing his own thing out there. His health as guy. well. His health as well. His health is in injury prone, or he's not taking care of himself. Um, I think a little combination of both. Really, is that he wasn't taking care of himself, so became injury prone, and he didn't seem to fit with the organization in terms of getting along in the dressing room right. and in New York and stuff like his maturity, a lot of questions about his maturity. Right. Um, but he's supposed to be an amazing NFL prospect when he came into the league. Yeah. Um, in 2021. So this is kind well, of the chief saying, oh, well, maybe he can, maybe we can get him to be what he's supposed to be because he's now yeah. with Patrick Mahomes. He's got a legendary hall of fame coach that's with him. And he's, playing with these wide receivers that whether they're good or not are scoring touchdowns. Yeah. Did you, did you like uh, Andy Reid in that uh, insurance commercial where he's drawn on his players' faces? Yeah, I do like that commercial. I do commercial. like that commercial. I'll get to the bottom of this. I'll get to the bottom of this. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I like those commercials, by the way, the ones with uh, Mahomes and even Rogers. Yeah. Was, was the State Farm? That's State Farm, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I like those commercials. We don't we don't have any of those uh, insurance. We got one insurance company out here for for auto. 
Yeah, I know. Oh, well, that's a British Columbia thing. We don't need yeah. to talk about that. Um, yeah. I, how are like the the Chiefs are doing pretty well with the receivers they have right now? Are they not? Oh, 100 percent. They're throwing to everybody. They throw to anybody yeah. that's open. They're five and two. They're throwing to anybody that's open. They're scoring a million points. So I don't think this was like a desperation move. Like, hey, we need, you know, this wasn't a Packers situation where they needed a wide receiver. Right. I think there could be a huge upside. And the downside oh, would they give up? They gave up a third round and a fifth round pick. Yeah. So I or six round pick, a third and a six round pick. So, like, they weren't going to do anything to imp- vastly improve their team for the next three years with those picks. And they're a team that needs to win every year now because of yeah. the quarterback they have and the team they have. So, to me, this is a, a great pick if they can get uh, Tony to be the prospect he was supposed to be, use yeah, the word potential mold and mold him into something good. Now, do you think? They did this despite the Packers. <laughs> I'm starting to think that nobody likes the Packers. And yeah, every move was done. My question is, what did the Packers not? And again, you're not going to know the, the answer to this, but did the Packers just like think too much of themselves in their smug way that they, you know, we call out their fans for being the, oh, no, no, we want, they wanted too much for everything. They didn't want to pay enough for anything. And everyone's just like, listen, we're going to do business with you. Like, you guys need a guy pay up like well you know we got this many super bowls we've had uh, vince lombardi coach us whatever they say yeah and they didn't pay up like they needed a guy they didn't make a move or they just accepted you know what it's over aaron Rodgers is done here it's over we're not winning anything this season do you think that he that's, was he just so signed for like four visible. more years yeah I don't he just know. signed that's for like four more years stupid. so do you think that that's the case then they needed receivers. You saw how frustrated he was. What was it? He was celebrating because one of his guys made one good route in that um, Buffalo game because nobody was doing anything. None of his receivers are any value to him. He was so visibly frustrated. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. And that's not going to change this season. No, he's got nowhere to throw the ball to. And the three guys he has are pretty old, are they not? They're injured right now. Well, he's got Randall a couple Cobb. rookies, and he's got Randall Cobb. Like Randall and Cobb's old. Sammy Watkins. Sammy Watkins is on the older side of things. Yeah, but he's also on the injury prone side of things. So he's not going to be. Well, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's. So it's I, I, Packers are dead. They're dead. Should we just call them dead right now? Should we have a segment where we just say these guys are dead? How many more games can they win this season? The Packers. Yeah. Let's go through the schedule real quick. Let me get the Packers up here. We have the Packers. Oh, they're three and five. They're currently second in the NFC North. Their schedule for the rest of the year contains. Here we go. Uh, well, this week they play the Lions. It's okay. That'll probably be a win. Yeah. It's in Detroit, if that means anything. Division games kind of mean more. So I don't know. We'll say it's a win. So there's one more win. Then they play Dallas. That's, That's a, loss. a loss. Then they play Tennessee. Somehow I'm starting to think that if Tennessee is still five and two, loss. Yeah. Then they play Philadelphia. Loss. Should be a loss. Then they play Chicago. Could be a win. Win. I mean, then, that, that should be a win just because of the fact that Aaron Rodgers does not lose to Chicago. I mean, yeah, that it. But well, let's say it's a loss because Claypool goes started. off for 350 yards and three touchdowns. It's in Green Bay as well. So should we say that's a win? Yeah, that's a win. Okay, so that's three. Then they play Miami. That's a loss. It's in Miami. Yeah. Then they play Minnesota. That's a loss. It's a loss. Then they play Detroit again. So let's say that's a win. Yeah. So they win seven games. They go seven and eight. That's not playoffs. It's not the playoffs. So they're dead. It's over. We just kill them now. That's it. That's the end of the Packers. That's it. We don't discuss them anymore. All right. No more Packers talk unless you shit unless, on them. That should be the rule always anyways. Unless we come up with another team that spited them. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's a bunch of, probably a bunch of teams out there that are spiting them. Well, I think there's 31 of them, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there is. There is. I can't stand Packers. I, there's my most hated team in sports. 
the most I can't think of another sport. team I hate more than the Green Bay Packers. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. So I am I reading this right about Christian McCaffrey in San Francisco? Did you see this? What's... He threw a touchdown, caught a touchdown, and ran for a touchdown. Yes, yeah, like the last time somebody did that was um Tomlinson, Ladanian Tomlinson, 05 or something. Yeah, he's the, only the fourth player to do it since like the NFL AFL merger. He definitely seems like that uh change of scenery has revived him. Oh, it's I mean it's his first game and he's Throwing a touchdown. Second first tech, sure. Second game. First full week with the team. Yeah. Now, again, he's coming off of um, a lengthy injury. So, it, you know, it was starting to get better in Carolina anyway. Not that good. Not that good. He's not throwing touchdowns, catching touchdowns, <laughs> and running for touchdowns. No, no. With PJ Walker at the helm, you're not letting Christian McCaffrey throw touchdowns, right? That's for sure. What? <laughs> that's a cheap. That's a cheap shot. I did got you nothing see Walker? I did you see the PJ Walker. Walker bomb? That was a bomb that he threw. That hail mary was huge. Yeah, that was XFL worthy. That was NFL worthy from an XFL guy. <laughs> that was a huge touchdown. Like that. Look, yeah. go back and watch that play. It was. It was amazing. It was a yeah, perfect really. hail mary pass. I wouldn't even say they're calling it a hail mary. I don't think it was a hail mary. I think it was a perfectly thrown dart to a wide receiver on a path, on a route. I don't think it was a Hail Mary. It was a great pass. No, he knew what he was doing. There was no hope with it. There was no prayer. No, it was a perfect pass. His only perfect. prayer was don't take off the helmet. Don't take off the helmet. Don't, don't take, take off. Fuck. When you catch that ball, don't take. Ah, you Lock son a fucking of a helmet. bitch. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Now, does anything fall on the kicker? Obviously, you've made it hard for the kicker, but the kicker should still make the kick, no? With the game on the line? I feel like all kickers should make all kicks. Yeah. I don't understand why kickers don't make kicks. The only part is the snap, the holding it. If they bobble that, that's the only Agreed. time I can say, okay, well, it's, you know, somebody else screwed it up for you, set you up for failure. Agreed. I can see why that would be a reason not to miss a kick, but a reason why a kick didn't go so well that you hit the laces or something. But I don't think, I don't think kickers should, I don't want to use the argument that they have one job because it's a tough job. It's arguably one of the more. It's least forgiving because you don't have much room for error. If more you're not sure than anyone, if else. you're not a proven guy, you're gone. Yeah. You're very replaceable. There's 32 you need a history of success to have any sort of forgiveness. Yes. As a kicker. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, but they shouldn't miss, but also they shouldn't miss. No. Yeah. Right. It's All you wrong... do is practice. All you do is kick balls, practice, I... kick balls, practice, kick balls, practice, kick balls. I feel like Justin Tucker should be like the basic level of kicker. Like that should be the reliability of your kicker. He's reliable. He's going to make the, of kick. All, the best of all time. Yeah. But it seems so automatic, you know, like these are like the, some of those field goals in the wind from a bad position on a rainy day. Sure. Sure. But like sure. how automatic he is, is kind of how you expect you and I expect kickers to be. I think anyone does. Yeah. I think anyone does like kick should be automatic. It's a, it's a, that's why it's weird that they're starting to go for plays more on fourth down because they know that these kickers aren't so automatic anymore. Maybe nobody wants to be a kicker. And so there's no, um, there's well, not as many kickers coming out of uh, college. That's why they're bringing in soccer players and, and Australian rugby ballers. Yeah. Should we talk a little bit about the games coming up this week? What about the games last week? There were some. Uh... I didn't get. Why well, didn't get to watch any of them? Oh, you didn't watch any. Okay. Well, just looking at the scores, it kind of um, it brought up some of the things we said, like the Pats and the Jets. The Pats and the Jets. So the pa- talking... Patriots won. Yeah, the Patriots they benched won. Mac Jones real quick. Did you see the controversy about the it hitting the, wire. the line? The wire? wire, yeah. From the video I saw, it looks like it did. ESPN said it didn't. Now I don't see why ESPN would ever say yes. We fucked up with the rigging of our wire. Yeah, they would never. That, I don't know. But so the ball does I, look like it changes trajectory. It looks like it hit a wire on its way across the field. But don't you think that if that was true, the Patriots would? Well, I guess they won the game, so there's no point in bitching and moaning about it. No, but it's also a split-second thing, right, where 
all you see is the interception. You don't look up and scan the wires, but I, I don't know. You should be able to see that on the field, no? I think so. Belichick's got a way better view of that than you and I. That's why I don't. That's why I don't think that it actually hit the wires because every player and every person would be like, "That was bullshit." Like that was, like that was crazy. Yeah. And people would feel like somebody. There's sixty thousand fans in there, and fifty three players on each side. That's not counting coaches. There's probably two hundred team associates on or team affiliated people on each side of the field, plus sixty thousand fans. Not one of them during the game went that hit the fucking wire. Now, how? Because I always wonder that when they first introduced that sky cam, I think it was for one of the Super Bowls they were doing. It. I remember they do that kind of 180 video they'd show you on the yeah on TV. What? How often does that uh, wire come into play? It's ne- apparently never. No, I feel like it's it's done in such a way where it doesn't interfere. If it was a regular, it's always thing. behind the quarterback. It should the wires always from where I've been to the stadiums where they've had them. Yeah. And that always the wires are always behind the quarterback. Yeah. Cause it raises up and moves along like kind of an yeah. axis, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's so, four points to it, but that moves. So the only thing I can think of it was a uh, operator error where they hadn't moved it to the proper price. That would the be point. the only thing. Yeah. Which but, is going to, I mean, I'm surprised it hasn't happened before. Yeah. Anyway. But, yeah, it's irrelevant. Unless they still ended up winning the game, so there's no harm, no foul. Yeah, it just it cost a player his career. But other than that, it... Mac Jones, he's done. Is that it for him? No, I'm just, I, but I brought it up last week. Zappy, Zippy, Zappy he got benched first? again, right? Well, he was hurt, and then he got benched this game. No. Mm-hmm. No, you're right. He was benched, got- then he was hurt, then. He got benched again. Yeah. They no, they got it benched. Was his first game back. It was his first big game back from injury. This last one. No, because we talked about it last week that he got benched for Zappy. Yeah, but then Zappy didn't play so well, so they put Mac Jones back in. Right. Yeah. Zappy did not play well either. Yeah, but they won the game, so. Um, Broncos beat the Jaguars. Uh, that means that Hackett keeps his job. Vikings beat the Cardinals. Our boy Hopkins still scoring touchdowns. Seattle, 100 yards. Seattle still looking good. The Saints destroyed the Raiders. Your Raiders didn't even score any points. No, that uh, I think that's, that's the classic of why whenever Derek Carr has a good game or a good streak of four or five games. People just always look back at these games where it's just like, wow, you couldn't get the ball into the offensive zone until the fourth quarter. Yeah. Like it's just the lack of consistency to go anywhere in this league. Uh, Yeah, 100%. It was. She interrupted Gino. The The coach and everybody apologized to the fans, the Raiders fans, because of how bad their team is. Yeah. They shouldn't be that bad. No, they shouldn't be that bad. You said they were going to win the Super Bowl. I didn't say they were going to win the Super Bowl. You my team, never, my could... team never wins the Super Bowl. You said they were going to go to the Super Bowl. I didn't say they were going to go to the Super Bowl. Yeah, you said something like that. You were very high on them. No, I had them going second in the division. That's as high as I had them. A Super Bowl division. That was a good division. When we talked about it, it was a good division. That was, that was Two teams from that division were going to the Super Bowl this year. That's what we projected. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you're back, right. Seahawks the, Giants game. Seahawks Giants game was amazing. Yeah. Now, I feel like I can't say it just because uh, San Francisco now looks a lot better, especially destroying like you know manhandling the Rams like that. Yeah. But they're still chasing the Seahawks as of right now. Seahawks are first place, five and three. Forty Nine ers. Can four they four. keep it up? I think Forty Nine ers are going to be on their tail, probably surpass them. But I don't. Yeah. I Seattle think... keeps every week. Yeah. They keep. Outdoing expectations. Well, they're they got they got a steal with that rookie running back Kenneth Walker. That guy is really good. Also, remember that cornerback you were talking about? Uh, uh, what is it, Woolly? What's his name? Ty, 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 Tyreek Woolly or something? Right for the you were saying that yeah that you were saying like he was the fastest run of all time and that chase down yeah. for with Taysom Hill. Yeah. Well, Taysom Hill had the fastest recorded time. They just didn't record the other guy's time. That's what happened. 
<laughs> no, 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 it was the quarterback. You said the quarterback was the fastest time. They just didn't. Uh, they didn't uh, record it. So they recorded Taysom Hill having the fastest time, but the cornerback that caught him was that he caught him. He caught him, but he was just trying to like push him out of bounds or something. No, he was trying to tackle him or something. He didn't couldn't push him out of bounds or something. Yeah. It was something stupid, but he's looking pretty good too. It's a good team in Seattle. It's a good team. We should actually get down to a game. And when do we go? Well, I mean, I'm unemployed as of a, as of Monday next week. Yeah. So any of the games after that. Okay. Let's sort this out. Off the air. Off the air. I was going to say, we're just let's not do it now. <laughs> sort it out. Oh, it take two hours. Off the air. So the other games, uh, Commanders beat the Colts. Fucking nobody cares. Colts are just dreadful. Um, Colts are dreadful. How, when Taylor. does that coach get fired? I, yeah, or do they I keep him? They like him. They, he just fired a bunch of other coaches as like scapegoats. But Jonathan Taylor didn't practice this week. Uh, high ankle sprains are not good for running backs in terms of getting back healthy. Um, so that's it might turf, be a dumb, that's turf field. They play on turf field. It's a turf field. And then the Browns beat the Bengals Monday night, and oh. Sean Watson's coming back in T minus one, two, three in two weeks. Did you watch that week. game? You didn't watch that game. No, he comes back week twelve, so in a month from now. Um, Browns Bengals. No, I did not watch. The Browns just looked far superior. Well, that's weird because the Bengals went to the Super Bowl and the Browns. Just went yeah, to the but the Bengals, they couldn't get anything going until the fourth. Right. They right. were just outmatched the entire game. Well, that's weird. Because Burrow and, had uh, such a great game the week before. Well, I think he's just terrified of Miles Garrett. Well, did you see the play where he went to tackle him? And then he's like, oh, shit, that's Miles. Miles Garrett had a, like a fumble. Yeah, I think he got sacked. Uh, he had a sack and maybe a, um, a, a fumble from him earlier. Yeah, and, but also, and then, what was he gonna do to me? like the, people saying like his knees oh, out. he ran away, he ran away he ran Miles away Garrett. but take his knees out. There's nothing he's gonna do to Miles Garrett, but Miles Garrett was the blocker. Out. Take his he, knees out, but that he still doesn't make the tackle. No, but the other guy might stumble over you. Yeah, but I just mean there's nothing he was gonna do. Miles Garrett was pushing him out of the way anyway. Like there's he wasn't <sighs> stopping Miles Garrett, like running away, like he had no Cut choice him. in the matter, right? If he Cut wanted him. to push him forward, he wanted to push him Cut sideways, him. he's going whatever direction Miles Garrett pushes Cut him. him. Cut him at the knees. Cut him in the knees. Anyway, they, they uh, did tackle the guy. And actually, it was called back because he was tackled at the beginning of the play anyway. So it was yeah. all irrelevant. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Okay. Let's talk about this week's uh, real quick because we are over our time allotted limit here. Time out uh, then. At running down the Dual time out. We get we'll a do dual. Are we on the same minute, team? Our six minute time out. Uh, Here's my question Are we on the same team? Like, can we be on the same time out or no? We're against each other. Usually, we're supposed to be against each other. Oh, that's for the time. Okay, well then I'm not calling the timeout. Uh, what's no, the game we're of the calling week? all six timeouts. What's the game of the week? Okay, well tomorrow night is Houston Texans versus Eagles. Eagles blowout win. Nobody gives a shit. Yeah, Houston... Chiefs Titans is Sunday night. Uh, I don't. I don't want to watch the Titans though. But I guess. But they're five and two. That could be a good game. They got the same record. They got the same record as yeah, the Chiefs. That's a big game. This Derek Henry. Big... Derek Henry's just going to run all over the place. He He's back. Wrong. He had a great week last week. Oh, yeah. Um, Commanders, Vikings, nobody cares. Bengals, Panthers. Panthers have another chance to win there based on how the Bengals are playing. Jets, Bills is a little bit interesting. Bills are favored to win by 12 and a half, but because the Jets are better this year, could be a I game. Don't probably think not. I think the Bills blow them better. out. I don't yeah, think blow, the Bills better, blow yeah. them out. Patriots, Colts. Patriots probably win that game because the Colts stink. Um, Raiders, Jaguars, so it's a three nothing game. Uh, we don't know who win it. Bears, Dolphins, nobody cares. Packers, Lions, Packers are only favored to win by three and a half because they suck that bad this year. But the Lions are worse. It's in Detroit. No, because I'm the Lions with... lose by three regularly. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to go with the Detroit Lions in this game. Uh, Chargers, Falcons. That's at 10 a.m. You got to think the Chargers are going to win that, even though it's in Atlanta. Are the Falcons better than the Chargers? Chargers are not good. The Chargers lost last week too, didn't they? I think they had a bye week last week. They had a bye week last oh, week. Oh, bye week. Yeah, they did. Yes. yes. Um, but they are four and three. Same number of wins. Same number of wins. Less Same losses. Number, less losses. Okay. I think they're a better team. They'll be healthier now. Keenan Allen gets a little bit of time to rest. Uh, to Is come he back? back? Yeah, he's he's back. Okay, so I think Chargers win that one, and then you got Cardinals Seahawks. Cardinals are favored to win this game in Arizona. 
Yeah, because people have been writing off the Seahawks still, still every writing week. Off. Yeah. Still writing them off. I even keep saying when this Geno Magic is going to run out. But yeah, it, it's not even the hopeful plays. Like he's playing well. He's making the right decisions and doing the right things. Like he's playing proper football. Like it's yeah. I don't even want to call him magic. At what point do we stop calling the magic? It's I know, I know. He's Luck. making the right yeah. place. He's this is a season of Gino. Yeah. So this is weird. He gets the Madden only, cover next year. There's only <laughs> he might fuck, he might. He might get the Madden cover. If they made the playoffs, he might be the MVP. Yeah, he's sure. Sure. He's having a great year. He's yeah. Having a great year. Any way you look at it. There's only two one o'clock games. That bugs me. Oh, is there some European games in there that they detracted not, from? Not this week. Nope. No. There's so only there's two just, one o'clock games. There's a on ton Sunday. of 10 a.m. games. What? All of them are 10 a.m. except for the Sunday night game, uh, which is the Chiefs Titans. Great game. Um, but there's only two one o'clock games. That makes me very angry. What are the two games? Cardinal Seahawks. Good game. Okay. That'll be a good game. Buccaneers Rams Super Bowl. Um, Hopefully. last year, yeah, last year's uh, the last NF- two, NFC last Champions two Super, Super yeah, yeah, the last two Super Bowl winners. Yeah, but they both stink this year. They do stink. Who that makes me worse? angry. Like, why can't we have more one o'clock games? I it's a West Coast thing, but why can't we have more one o'clock games? I don't understand. What time are these games on the East Coast? Plus three, four. These are- four o'clock. No, but you said that they're 10 a.m. games. So why do they have all? Like no, 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 no. Changed- all the 10 a.m. games for us are one o'clock games. I understand. Weekend. What I'm saying is, there's you usually, know how time works. There's usually more one o'clock games. Those additional usually one o'clock three games, or four. which we should have had, have reverted to 10 a.m. games, right? Yes. So why have they added more 10 a.m. games? I don't know. 10 a.m. is one o'clock on the East Coast. Yes. So they just wanted more. One o'clock East Coast games. I don't know because the Chargers Falcons games in Atlanta, but that could easily be a one o'clock game. The Raiders Jaguars is a ten a.m. That could easily be a one o'clock game. Um, and those are just like West Coast teams going to the East Coast to play. Like there could be four. Those those could be the four games. There's usually three or four games that you, are played at one o'clock. Do you think they've done it to spite the Packers? <laughs> Everything now is just despite the Packers. Uh, <laughs> and then our Monday night game is Saints Ravens. Uh, I think Ravens win that one. Ravens week. should walk all over them. Yeah. Ravens should walk all over them. Yeah. They're two and a half point favorites. It's in New Orleans. Um, I think game of the week is that Sunday night game, Chiefs Texans, or sorry, Chiefs Titans. But the Chiefs are supposed to win that. It's for their favorite to win by 12 and a half points. Yeah, because the Titans aren't good. The Titans have a five bad and two. division. Five and two. Yeah, they have a bad division. And I don't think, again, this is what something I brought up last week. And I keep saying again on everything. So I just keep repeating myself because I got nothing else to say. I don't think there's that many good teams in the NFL this year. There's a bunch of bottom of the barrel guys playing each other. And there's a few good teams. Yeah. There's a handful of good teams. That's it. Yeah. Inflated records. Yeah. This is a bunch of blowouts, huh? Well, we'll find out. And uh, thank you, everyone, for listening to uh, this week's podcast, uh, Running Down the Clock. I'm Tyler Walsh. I'm here with Puya Ricey. We will see you next week. Running Down the Clock is brought to you by the Ordinary Podcast Network and is every Thursday running until the week after the Super Bowl. We hope you enjoyed enough to subscribe and tune in again next week.